who shall stand to the heel of the Lord? Of the Lord. Or who shall stand? Or who shall stand in his holy place? In his holy place. He that hath clean hands. He that hath clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul. Who hath not lifted up his soul. Unto vanity. Unto vanity. Nor sworn deceitfully. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive. He shall receive. The blessing from the Lord. The blessing from the Lord. And righteousness. And righteousness. From the God of his salvation. From the God of his salvation. This is the generation. This is the generation of them, of them that seek him. That seek him. That seek the face. That seek the face. O Jacob. O Jacob. Selah. Selah. As we look at this pericope of text, I invite you to look at someone near you and tell them, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, including you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, including you. Somebody is guilty. And actually, actually, uh, when we first moved to the neighborhood we moved in, it wasn't long after somebody 
seem to purposely bring in the wintertime their dog in my yard. And I know <laughs> we had had a visitation because every morning I saw uh, remnants of the dogs <laughs> leaving. And that angered me because they mistreated what belonged to me. And I even have an issue with folk who borrow my books. My books are like my babies. I, 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 I can even now talk about some books. Uh, there's a book I learned out 15, 18 years ago. And I still, every now and then, say, man, you know, I can't recall who I learned it to, but I remember my book. And other books that I've had, I can recall those books, and, and they're disturbed because I'm aware that somebody has mishandled or misrepresented what belongs to me. I see where you're going about. Mine. My books, my car, my yard, my house, and, and, and you steal my money. It's easy to get an attitude because folks take stuff that belongs to you to mistreat my kids or my family or my mother, to mistreat anything that belongs to me upsets me. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes if you're not careful, you can get upset when folk even mess with your food. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all was raised in households where you had siblings who borrowed your clothes and stuff. And I've heard many of y'all talk about how when you got to school or, or you got back home, you was angry. Because I want to know why you put on my dress. What you got my shoes on for? That was mine. Mine. Anybody been there with me? Yeah. I don't want my using my car without my permission. That's mine. But the psalmist said, look in Psalm 24. He says, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and everybody that lives in it belongs to the Lord. Let me give you the foundation of this text. It is far, it's far deeper and far more reaching than it appears to be on the surface. It's a psalm by, by David. It's a psalm that David writes. It has a dual meaning to it. It is, it is referred to in the New Testament because it actually is a reference to the Lord's return in the New Testament. But here in Psalm 24, foundationally, it has a special type of meaning in its own natural context. It's believed to be a psalm written when David realized he was going to go back and get the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. And if you don't know what the Ark of the Covenant is, I'll go back and look at uh, Indiana Jones and the, uh, <laughs> the Lost Ark, where they actually identified them trying to find the Ark of the Covenant and bring the Ark of the Covenant uh, back back home. But but when you talk about the Ark of the Covenant, it was something that God had built to remind His people of the relationship He had with them. Basically, if you will, the size of a communion table, you can say on the top. Uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant, about the size of a communion table, you could say uh, uh, the, the outside of it was laid in with gold, and, and the top of it had, had the, the structure of, uh, of, a, of a seraphim and a cherubim, two types of angels were structured on the top toward the front end of the of the Ark of the Covenant, and then and then there was a section where they put poles through to carry it, because you ain't got no business ever touching the Ark of the Covenant. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant, the three things were stored inside the Ark. When Moses was told to go up into the mountain to speak with God, he went up there, he's up there for too long, almost 40 days, and while he was up there, the people got impatient, waiting on Moses, and copped an attitude and started talking to Aaron, his brother, and said, Aaron, you know, Moses is going too long. We need something to worship. So Aaron claims he took some gold and threw it in a fire, and a golden calf jumped out of the fire, and they began to worship the golden calf. God tells Moses, these folks have turned their back up on me. I'm about to kill them all. And God said, Moses said, Lord, don't kill them. Don't kill them.